Okay, so welcome back to the Rod Shop again. Uh, we're going to show you how to build this light inshore salt spinning rod, the SP843. We actually have already built one that we thought we were showing you, but somebody had a camera mistake. That was me. Um, this is what it's going to look like. Oops. Fortunately, we're building five of them, so we have plenty to play with today. And that starts next. Y'all stick around. So the first thing we did was we took the sticker off. We need to get a little alcohol here, clean the residue off from where the stickers were. Y'all remember Nate from the very first series we did where he learned to build his first rod, which wound up in the middle of Lake Hatchinaw. With the dogma week. on it. With a dogma and a nice reel because somebody was in a pontoon boat and had the rod in a sock laying tip forward when caught it whew, and before he got turned around it was on the bottom so he would be building himself another one although he's built probably 15 rods by now he's getting pretty good at it he's in here to help me because we got to crank out these five rods in the next 10 days um, to be delivered for the make-a-wish fundraising uh, saltwater tournament in Tampa Bay in two weeks. So, first thing we're going to do is let's put some tape ahead of the reel seat and we'll spline these real quick. So let's spline away. So down in the carpet, this is a medium power, moderate action rod so you're going to have to put a lot of bend in it and when it snaps it snaps there's no doubt where the backbone of this rod is so i'm going to mark this one and we're going to check it that's the second one Ooh. that one's got three it does have three i think that's the most pronounced one that's the other side of it Mm. Well, that's the most pronounced one. This one kind of almost fooled me. So this is now what we think the backbone is, the spine, the bottom, the dirty side, the trigger side, the stem side, whatever you want to call it. The fighting side. Got two definite Yeah, I'm going to go with that one. I think that one is going to be the strong one. We'll make that one across so we don't get confused. All right, so that is the stem side of this rod. So it's a spinning rod. Now we're going to set that stem at 12 inches, which is pretty standard for a spinning rod. That's the center of the stem. This is our rear grip. It's the WEN 275. And then we're just going to mark with tape the back of that rear grip, which is right there at 8 inches. And then I'm going to fold the end of it over here so it makes it a lot easier to get it off when we're gluing up. There we go. Okay. We've already reamed a set of these grips. Like I said, we have already built one. We actually thought we were building it on camera, but we didn't build it on camera. Well, we built it on camera. It's we, just the camera didn't record us. That's true. It was the camera's fault. It was not operator error. It wasn't my fault at all for <laughs> setting it wrong or anything. So look. <laughs> Let's drag the re the trash box out and the reamers. We're going to start with the medium reamer. <clears throat> we know that this rear grip is more than the medium. We have to go into the large with it. Um, but when you're reaming these wind grips, they are basically rubber. And you do not want to ream very fast because you don't want to heat them up. You want to do a slow grind basically on these. And you want to make sure you're turning and repositioning the grip in your hand every time you stop reaming. So let's go ahead and get this one started. So I'm going to ream. I'm going to turn it. I'm going to ream. And 
turn. You might even chuck it up in the... Whoops. 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 My assistant let me down there. Starting to get a little warm in my hands. But these things make a mess. That's why everything is staying in the trash box. And you probably shouldn't be wearing a white shirt when you do this. Or... <laughs> Or nice clothes. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> and guts everywhere. Okay, so now this one, we also, is going to be more than the medium. So we're going to go ahead and ream it down to the medium. see there is black dust everywhere it's not the kind of dust that floats so you don't have to worry about it in your uh, in your epoxy but it will get all over you. all right so we're going to take this one down now with the EVA and the wind you're going to want to stretch them up on the blank a little bit. I would say about what, a uh, half in, or yeah, an inch, 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 inch and a half? inch or so. That one we got just a little over on. But we'll arbor that up and stretch up over an arbor. Not a big deal, put two wraps of tape on it and that'll be fine. Let's check the rear. And that one's just a little, I over reamed this one too, it's just a little loose, but we can arbor up. So, not again, not a big deal. A wrap of tape around Yeah, one wrap of tape and it's, it's going to squeeze up on it nice and tight. So, if you want to move the trash box, well, let me get the rest of this off of me. Yeah, cleanup's not done yet. Yep, all right, get the trash box. Grab us a plate and some popsicle sticks. Yep. And we'll get to mixing some epoxy. We'll get these staged up on the, uh, I'll go ahead and put a couple turns where I over reamed. Again, not a big deal. It happens. I didn't do it on purpose, but it is good for you guys to see what how you fix a mistake and if you guys watched that last video series I did where I was building the the 6-4 jerkbait rod I had a day of mistakes and it was just it was brutal that was one of those days where nothing I did went easy and I know a lot of these videos it looks like it's really easy what I'm doing and a lot of times it really is but I've been doing this for almost 20 years so it should be easy by now Luckily, I have a teacher that easy. But I still make mistakes. It's going to happen. So let's check and see how these tighten up. We're going to load them on the blank here. Could use another wrap or two. That's pretty snug here. That arbor needs to go back, so no. Alright, so we're going to peel this arbor off. Got a little far forward with this one. I'm going to move it back here. Nate's mixing up the uh, UB42 part 10 minute epoxy. We need to add a couple there. And it is always good to overmix and not undermix. You under mixed a bunch. Well, for well, our arbors. Too. Yeah, the real seat, we're going to have to get quick on the real seat, but we can do that. Because that epoxy may set before we get it arbored, but we're trying. we'll give it a whirl. I don't like, I've got one tag here. 
or a tour. And I can fix that later. Okay, that's ready to go. I could use a little one there. I just want them to be tight when I push them up. Unlike cork, which you want loose, the EVA and the wind, you want really to squeeze them up. Okay, that's good. All right, so we're gonna start loading some mixed epoxy for the fighting butt here. I don't know why they call it a fighting butt, but that's what wind calls it. And it's there so they can call it what they want. All right, now we're gonna twist and push it back squeezing and take paper towel and get most of that off with a dry paper towel and come right back in with a wet paper towel yep now we got an alcohol soaked towel we're cleaning out the excess from inside the butt of the blank so I don't know if we're going to have to balance this rod or not. I haven't built one of these in a while. I don't do a lot of salt. I build these five rods every year. Now the other thing is that we do have a trigger side, a stem side, the backbone, the bottom of the rod, whatever you want to call it. And these wind grips have a seam and a pattern and you want the seam on the bottom of the rod so that's the stem that's the seam we'll check it in a little bit all right so now we're going to epoxy up this rear grip heavier epoxy since we've got some gaps here now that we've got it arbored just to make sure we get good contact between the grip and the blank okay and we're going to spin this one up let's get nice and tight before I get to the end I'm going to peel most of this excess off it up to our tape mark now we need to line up the spine and the seam and I'm not going to pull this marker tape yet just because it's not as tight on that blank as I would like it to be and we're going to move right into arbor in the real seat and I don't want it to slide back so, one of the things about these real seats, grab me another real seat, Nate. Real quick about these real seats, and I'll explain it to you a little more later, but inside the CCT seats, there is a huge gap for epoxy. Your arbor is going to ride on these fins here, but you have all of this gap in here for epoxy, so we're going to epoxy it heavy once we get the arbor. The, uh, the arbor is built for the real seat. Let's figure out where we're going to put the arbors. We're going to one in the back, obviously. And I'm just going to put a piece of marker tape up here for the front for a minute. Slide that off. And it moved. That's why we left that marker tape on in the back there. All right, so let's build some arbors real quick here. We got five more minutes on the Fox. Yeah, you can go a little longer normally. But we'll see because it gets really tacky really quick. And the arbor's not quite thick enough yet. Go to the rear arbor. Put the front arbor in. 
pull that marker tape there out of the way. Don't need it anymore. build an intermediate arbor to make sure we keep that epoxy packed up inside those fins I just showed you on the inside of this reel seat that's perfect all right let's put some epoxy on before that stuff sits It's getting sticky already, so we're going to have to do this quick. Getting thick. Looks like some jelly jam. <laughs> it's getting sticky. Alright, so we're going to spin as we push, filling inside of those fins with epoxy and we're going to have a little extra on this one so what I'm going to do is I'm going to push it close and I'm going to keep turning it and pulling it in you can see it pulling that epoxy in I don't want too much to squeeze out like a wet towel dry one. Um, I'm going to go ahead and push this up and then we'll go with a wet one. We didn't have too much squeeze out. Alright, so we're good on the marker tape. Give me a wet one. Get some of this excess off the front here for a second. That's cleaned up. One thing I do like to do though is that, and this stuff is almost set. I think we got just a second here. I'm going to pack the front of this reel seat full of epoxy. So when you go to do your thread epoxy work, it doesn't keep trying to get sucked in there when you're trying to do your, your epoxy ramps. All right, give me a wet one. I gotta get this residue off here before it sets completely. Alright, now let's make sure we got our alignment proper. There's the stem. Oh, it is sticky. I told you it gets sticky quick. There's the stem. There's the seam. And then if you look on the top, these marks line up almost perfectly with the accent marks here in the in the wind grip. Let's check this one. That seam looks good. There we go. And we're gonna peel this. Wipe, give me a wet one. Wipe that one time. Just make sure we don't have any excess residue here on the back. And there is the handle set for your light inshore rod. Now, when we come back here in a minute, we're going to set up and do a load test, a static load test to determine guide placement. So don't go away. We'll be right back. All right, guys, welcome back. We have given some cure time on one of the handle assemblies. We have put the microwave airwave guide system on using the 
CRB micro rubber bands um, that I use to hold guides on. We had to tape the first one, obviously it's a big foot, wouldn't work. We have used the recommended placement of the stripper guide transition guide from the microwave packaging. Um, the, the first running guide coming out didn't work out. We've laid these out in a pattern that that I'm comfortable with. It's basically one of my spiral wrap uh, layouts, but we now have it in our static load tester. We got the line in it. We're about to put it under static load and check to make sure that we have our guide placement correctly. All right, so we're going to pull this one back a little. I'm going to pull this one back a little. This one's coming back. So all we're doing is we're pulling a load on this blank and looking for how the line comes through. Do you think that first stripper and the guy needs to come back a hair? Oh. Let me get this in straight now. That one's got a weird kink in it. Yeah, that's... Again, I'm going to give you guys this actual guide layout for this blank and this particular guide train. No, actually I'm pretty good with it. I mean, you're gonna have that in your transition coming on a spinning rod because you're used to doing these for Big casting, casting rods and you're, you start so much lower. So you've got one little bit of a kink here. Everything else is fine. That's it. So I, d I do have a video up on how to do this static load testing. I'll put a link to it down in the description for you in case you haven't seen it or can't remember where it is. But I always do this on a blank that I haven't built on before, haven't built on in a long time. Um, I have standard guide layouts for almost everything I've built. After I've done the testing, I'll record it in a log. It's on my laptop. But it's a piece of cake to do this kind of testing. It's important so you don't overstress a particular part of the blanks. It's really quick to do and it'll ensure your guide placement. But we're going to get to wrapping on these five rods and try to get these out of here in the next few days. You don't need to see that because you've seen both of us wrap plenty of guides. This is it for the recipe and go build you a nice light inshore saltwater rod for yourself. Thanks for watching guys. We'll see you next time.